Well, if you've made it this far, that means you've made it to the last week of the course. Um, it's common at this time of the year for um, stu lots of students to enroll and then for students to, to drop, but I feel like those of you that have stuck with it, I believe that you've learned a lot, and I would hope that you would agree with that. I hope this course has been an engaging experience, learning the basics of XHTML, uh, HTML, and CSS. Hopefully the basics that can at least um, get you into perhaps building a very simple site, um, perhaps give you a little bit of knowledge to perhaps sit on a team of people at your place of work who perhaps are making decisions on a website and perhaps even work with a team of people who are um, designing a website. Um, there's more courses uh, for those of you who do pursue, want to pursue a career in web design or web development. There are more courses to go, um, but I hope that this course has at least given you a foundation um, for all of that learning that's to come. So the purpose of this presentation today isn't really, I'm not giving you necessarily words of wisdom, I just want to kind of give you some guidance on what, um, for those of you who do really want to pers perhaps pursue a career in web design or web development, perhaps what you should consider learning next. So my first answer to the question, what should I learn next, um, well it's really up to you and your needs. Uh, we talked earlier on in the course the differences between perhaps someone who might be taking this class as more of a hobbyist, someone who just kind of wants to, you know, learn uh, the basics to perhaps build, you know, a simple website. And then there's also someone who might consider themselves a professional, someone who do wants a career in web design and or web development. So I'm guessing that all of you in the course either fit into one of those two camps. Uh, someone who's more of a hobbyist and some of one who is more considering like you know a professional route and even if you are considering a professional route there's many different avenues for you to kind of get into so let me take a look let's take a look at something I have shown I have set up for you in the course for this week so for those of you who are considering going the professional route um, I would suggest perhaps um, sometime soon you know really start thinking about um, do you want to be more of a web designer or do you want to be more of a web developer? And I provided you with a resource this week that is uh, one part humorous, uh, one part truth in a sense. Um, this blog post you know, has, has a really fun infographic um, that talks about the differences between uh, web designers and web developers. Students are always asked, you know, why can't I do both? Um, it's, it, and a lot of people disagree with me, but I believe that it's a little bit better to perhaps specialize unless you're going to be perhaps more of a freelancer. If you're wanting to be a freelancer and try to do everything yourself and you're going to be doing perhaps smaller websites, then it would make sense to have uh, at least a taste into, into both of the camps. Um, but for those of you who are going to perhaps want to be a professional within a firm, a web design firm or what, uh, of some sort, uh, a chop shop that you know makes websites, it would, in my opinion, be best to perhaps specialize. If you're considering to be more of uh, a supervisorial role, perhaps a managerial role, then it would make sense to have at least an awareness of both of these two different areas, um, because then you would know exactly you know what the roles of these uh, two different um, type of functions provide. So I would suggest you know taking a look at this uh, humorous. Um, discussion of the differences between these two and just really start pondering um, exactly what you would want to do and keep in mind within our course we have the ability to uh, let me show you at, on the home page scroll down to the bottom you'll see we I have linked here the web design certificate and the web, web development certificate so I would consider you know going here once you kind of make your decision because our 2000 class is the entry level for both of those courses and really just think about you know what you want to pursue. We do have students that take both. Do you necessarily need to do both? No. You know, do you necessarily need to have a degree in computer science to be a web designer? No. I mean, I've talked before, but all you really need to to be able to to get a job in this field really is just to be able to show what you do. Now, that's a tall order if you don't really have the skills necessary to show what you do because you haven't learned how to do it yet. But once, in my opinion, you you really feel competent and you truly feel like you can you have the skills that you need my suggestion is go actually go out there and get practical experience and start trying to perhaps do some small freelance projects and uh, just by you doing more you'll learn more because I as you'll see in a second here in the presentation I really feel like our best learning is when we have problems and where we try to figure out solutions to those problems so anyways the purpose of this I just wanted to show you this resource to just kind of get you humorously thinking about these different roles and I really think it would be best for you to really think about right now you know 
what your next steps are. Are you going to be more of a hobbyist or are you going to be more of a professional? So my next suggestion on what you should do to learn next is basically to gather your resources. I would suggest not um, gathering an overwhelming amount of resources because just merely gathering them and having them feed into your inbox or having them go to your Google Reader or whatever, if you're not actually looking at them, then they really don't do you much good. You're more so just collecting resources for, for the hopes that you would then go into them and find something in the future. I would suggest gathering a good amount of resources that you're really interested in and actually trying to spend a time, a weekly amount of time, you know, digging into them each week. Perhaps that's, you know, 20 minutes uh, on Sunday mornings. I, I don't know. But the point is gather your resources and actually vest, become vested in those resources and truly spend time with them. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. One of the areas I'd like to call your attention to is the external resources area that link that you'll find on the home page of the course. Um, perhaps you have explored these, perhaps you haven't. I've tried to introduce you to some of these resources each week and offered extra credit for students to discuss uh, you know, their impression of certain blogs within these resources. Um, it's often students don't often take that opportunity for that extra credit, but some of you did. Some of you may have already been to this external resources page before, but what I would suggest now is truly go in here and take a look at some of these, for example, not necessarily the resources up here for learning, although these are great, but they're pretty, they don't really have a lot of updates necessarily. They're kind of like that main resource or perhaps cooler, you know, obviously that's a resource you would go to, but you're not really going to go there and be learning new things. So to learn new things, what I mean is perhaps come down here to the web design and development blogs. I would suggest exploring some of these blogs and perhaps set, syncing them up with uh, perhaps a Google Reader or some sort of RSS that would uh, send feed to your Outlook or to your email. But I wouldn't suggest doing it to all of them because then you're just going to be overwhelmed with lots of emails that you're not really going to be looking at. For example, like some of the blogs that I'm really interested in, I'm really interested into this blog here, a list apart, mostly just because of my field and what I do and my interest in content strategy. Um, other blogs I know a lot of that a lot of students find very popular are blogs like Smashing Magazine. Here, this is more um, this is more web design, graphic design, stuff like that. Uh, perhaps you'd be interested in like the Six Revisions blog, which I showed you earlier, that had the information about the differences between web design and web developer. Um, let's see, uh, Tuts. Tuts is great, but it's it is going to have some paid type stuff that you would uh, need to pay to view. But that's up to you. Um, Ninety nine percent. This is more of uh, creativity thinking, because in my opinion, if you're not thinking creatively, whether you're a graphic designer or a web designer. You know, what are you doing? So this is just kind of a blog to kind of get you thinking about that. Um, we also have the freelance folder. So those of you who are considering more freelancers, resources there for like all sorts of things in terms of freelancing and web design. You know, in this 24 ways, I actually do read this uh, around Christmas time because what they do here, this is a really fun one because they only do 24 postings a year and they do them in the month of December. So uh, that's a fun thing to do. Um, and that only comes up in December. So I would suggest finding a blog, if not one even one of these, finding a blog that you do like that would be constantly giving you new information and really do try to spend time each week learning from it and seeing what new things are out there and coming up from it. Um, another thing that you should definitely consider is uh, while you're here at Webster utilizing the, the, the Linda resources. And I'm going to show you real quick just to make sure you remember, but from within the, let me go to the library, let me see. From the library, you can log into the Linda resources straight directly, so you don't have to necessarily go to it from the course because you won't be in this course necessarily next semester. So you would just go to the articles and databases. From within article and databases, you're then going to browse for the database that you want, and you're looking for Linda. So you would scroll down to Linda. You go into Linda.com. And then as long as you are enrolled here at the university, you have the ability to uh, log into this resource. So you can just log into it straight from here. And this is the page that you normally saw if you logged in through the course. So you would enter your name, your last name, and then your, pass your, your connections ID number. And the last letter is EWL, as you know. And then when you get into the resource, I would suggest um, so like let's say you wanted to learn something new. Uh, you can definitely you know browse by subject um, 
in terms of design and developing. You could browse by software. Like, for example, if you're taking my web editor's class, we're going to be specifically talking about Adobe Dreamweaver. Some of you might be interested in doing stuff with Adobe Flash. So you would do come here to Flash, if I could spell. Um, so Flash Professional. Uh, you Perhaps you want to learn how to do fireworks. Perhaps you want to learn to do more graphic stuff with your website. So maybe you would be wanting to do more stuff with images, so you would use Photoshop. If you were wanting to do make develop images your, yourself, in terms not instead of bitmap, which is Photoshop, you'd be doing more vector. So you would just want you would consider learning more Illustrator. Um, another resource that I would like to remind you of is uh, our Web Design Fundamentals course that we did view. So let's go ahead and go to that real quick. Uh, I went to HTML then filtered it again and now I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom and so within the web design fundamentals I would suggest um, as a resource because we didn't really read this um, last section here getting started what should I learn first getting online quickly this would be a great thing for you to kind of here at the end of the course I would suggest going back and watching chapter 3 I'm not testing you over it um, there's no questions, there's no quiz, there's nothing that you have to do. This is just my suggestion to help you get started. So what, re, watching these videos, what should you learn first, getting on quickly, tools for building sites, etc. Now that you've had the background knowledge, which is essentially, you know, earlier in the course, he introduced us to, with chapters 1 and 2, he gave us just a broad introduction of everything in, in the web, and then we used the other uh, Linda series to get us into the nitty-gritty of how to actually do those things, and now I believe you're ready to watch the chapter three getting started. So um, let's now talk about another suggestion that I have. So my last answer to the question, what should I do next, is find solutions to problems. We've kind of chatted first. We talked about, you know, it's up to us to answer how, you know, what should I do next ourselves. It really depends on you and your needs. And then I told you, I think it's great for you to also gather resources and make sure that you're spending time with them weekly. Now what I would suggest you doing is finding solutions to problems. So what do I mean by that? Well, one of the first problems that you might have, let's say a few weeks after this course, let's say you're not truly satisfied with your term project. Well, you've just given yourself a problem. So now what you can do is you can think about, you know, now that I have a whole lot more time, uh, what are some things that I want to do with my term project? Just because you've turned the term project in doesn't mean that you have to be done with it. Doesn't mean that you have to look at it, uh, that you never have to look at it again. So. A solution would be going out and using your resources and learning solutions to do the things that you want to do. Maybe you want to have a JavaScript menu. Maybe you want to have some some more images. Maybe you maybe you want to make your make sure your site is fully uh, designed within CSS and using divs. So using your resources, you can learn how to do that with your term project. Maybe eventually you're going to be interviewing for a job and you feel like you want to update your term project to have some more information into it. So that's another problem that you have. So now you have to go out and find the solutions to update your term project to be more applicable to something that you want to show a potential employer for your work. Other things that you can do is perhaps um, just think of problems in terms of maybe you see a site out there and you think um, I would like to you know redesign it. You don't necessarily have to contact Amazon and say you want to redesign design the site. Make your own simple Amazon type site um, on your own home computer. So you've given yourself a problem and now you just spend time practicing um, learning different solutions, finding solutions to build this potential site. Now, Amazon probably isn't a good example, but maybe you want to make a, a fan website. Maybe you want to make a website for an organization that you're involved in. Maybe you want to make um, a website for your neighborhood. I don't know. But basically, you know, go out and find problems. And believe me, once people know that you know how to do this, they're going to be knocking on your door and you're going to say, hey, can you do a website for my tree company? Or, hey, would you like to trade services and I'll I'll build you this deck in your backyard if you build me a website. I don't know, but essentially you have to go out and actively find those problems. And it's kind of hard to do that in the beginning because you might not necessarily have those connections or have those outlets yet. But it's all one of my things as a instructional designer, one of the things that I do is I'm vested within learning about learning theory. And one of the things that I truly believe is that we learn the best when we have problems and we're going out and solving those problems. That's where real learning happens. Uh, learning here in the course where I've been teaching you different things, you've been reading different things, the, where the learning actually happened was where you actually did it yourself. You learned more with your term project or you learned more with your midterm and your final exam than you did watching my videos or answering my quizzes. You actually learned when you were having, when you were given a problem and you had to solve it. You had to design your, your term project, stuff like that. Um, so 
don't stop. Maybe you're taking a semester or two off. Don't stop practicing your web design because you know it, knowledge that falls within your brain, you know, eventually will become inert if you're not using it. So my suggestion is go out and find solutions to problems. And please continue to use me as a resource even after this course is over. Maybe you'll take my next class uh, that I do teach within this series. Maybe you won't. But please consider me as a resource. Perhaps you would like me to look at a website that you're working on. Perhaps you might like a letter of recommendation for uh, a job that you're going to be applying for. Uh, perhaps you just want to keep in touch. A great way to do that is to find me on LinkedIn. Normally at the end of the course I always try to just go on LinkedIn and see what students are um, in LinkedIn and go ahead and request to make a connection. Um, but don't wait for me to do that necessarily. Find me on LinkedIn. That's a great way to stay connected with me. Uh, you have my university email address. Stay connected with me. Um, so I would just suggest, you know, uh, one of the suggestions, what should I learn next? Well, stay connected with me and perhaps I've, I've helped students find uh, internships. Uh, perhaps uh, I can help you solve per, uh, potential problems that you're working with. Um, but you know, keep in mind I do teach classes and I do you know have a family and I do uh, also have a full time job at Webster as an instructional designer. But I, needless to say, I'm here to I do want to help and I do want to keep a connection with you. One of my favorite companies is REI, and I love that St. Louis has an actual REI, and their slogan is "Never Stop Exploring." Well, I'd like to leave you with the slogan "Never Stop Learning." Um, like I mentioned in the previous segments. You know, if you're learning all of the stuff and you're not actually using it, you're not going out and solving problems, that knowledge you're learning is just going to fall inert and it's not going to be used. And then you'll go and you'll perhaps apply for a job a year or two from now and you'll say, you know, hey, I have this uh, certificate in web design or hey, I've taken these web design classes so I want to come in here and design this website for you. Well, if you haven't actually been fine-tuning those skills, sharpening your saw, your axe, and learning these new things, uh, when you finally get around to doing the job, it, it could be a very difficult learning curve because you haven't been diligently practicing. Um, so just because this course is done, just because the grades are in, just because you have a grade in your term project, I would suggest you know never stop learning. Continually to figure out what are new things that you can learn. And even once you get a web design job, does that mean that you then never stop learning? No, there's always new things that you're that you're going to need to be learning, especially in this field, especially because our our um, user agents and our medium essentially is always evolving. The internet is evolving all the time. Since I've been a web designer we've been you know we've had multiple different versions of CSS. We, we're now learning uh, and doing new things with CS5. I'm personally learning more stuff within CS5 all the time. Uh, not CS5, uh, HTML5 all the time. So I would just suggest you know take my advice, you know gather your resources you know based on what you need to do and find solutions to problems and keep me as a resource and never stop learning. So I've enjoyed having you in this class and I hope you will do well um, reviewing everyone's term projects and I know you're going to do well on the final exam and be sure you ask the class or any questions and I hope to keep in touch with you in the future.